Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com. Now, when I did my talk on the best Mozart violin concerto sets, some of you were screaming that I left out mention of David Oistrach, which I just shouldn't have done. I mean, it was a crime, right? Well, yeah. Yes and no. It's not the point. The point is not that Oistrach is a fabulous violinist and a fabulous Mozart violinist. He is all of those things. The reason I didn't talk about Oistrach in that particular talk was because I wanted to give him a video all of his own because I saw that this set, which came out in like 2008, 2009, the great recordings EMI, the great recordings. They had like a great recording series, which really meant anything we had sitting around in the catalog, more or less, except the things we forgot or left out. That's what the great recordings meant. But this box is still available. See, they changed the little hoogie up here. So now it's a Warner box, but otherwise it's exactly the same box as the EMI box. And so I now have an opportunity to talk about David Oistrock and his own box, including the Mozart Violin Concertos, which are marvelous, and the Sinfonia Concertante, which is, oh my God, even more marvelous. And so there you have it, you see? I've included him. You just have to look around a little and see where else he's included. Because really, any sane person who cares about great violin playing is going to want this box. Now, of course, Oistrach did many recordings for Melodia, and those have been sporadically available. And generally speaking, during those Melodia recordings in the 50s and, and before, he was in his prime. He got a little bit stodgier and a little bit more fallible as he got older towards the 70s. But still, I mean, the guy was just great. He was absolutely great, fabulously musical, incredibly intelligent, wonderful, wonderful violinist. So I'm going to go through this, 17 discs, yes, disc by disc, as I always do, and give you the fabulous and irresistible opportunity to laugh at me mispronouncing all kinds of Russian names. And who would pass up that opportunity, right? And what's actually interesting is that there are there are duplications in here, and the duplications are wonderful. I mean, they beg the question of how one performance of Concerto A can be a great recording, and the second performance of Concerto A should also be a great recording. I mean, generally, when you say the great recordings, you're going to pick one, especially if the same work. But like I said, who are they kidding? This is, the, this is what we have in our stash collection except for the things that we didn't include for no reason that anybody can figure out. So we're not even gonna go there. Let's just talk about what we do get and we'll take it from there. So, disc one, here we go. Beethoven, the Triple Concerto. This is with Lev Oborin and Sviatoslav Kushevitsky. Knushevitsky, pardon me. Knushevitsky, cello, with the Philharmonia under Malcolm Sargent. Well. That's not a performance you listen to every day. And then you get the Beethoven Archduke Trio with Lev Oborin and Sviatoslav Knushevitsky, which is actually quite marvelous. It's from 1956 or 58. What does this say? 58? Very, very, very fine. You know, like most of the really great serious violinists, Oistrakh was a fabulous chamber music musician and a wonderful, considerate partner in chamber music. He was not an egomaniac. He was not of the Heifetz variety where, you know, when he played chamber music, it was like Heifetz in front and everybody else somewhere else. You know, unless they were, unless the other soloists were as big as he was, like with Rubinstein and people like that, you know, they, they could keep him under control. But you never have that issue with Oistrakh. He was just a tremendously sensitive musician, very much similar in his way to Arthur Grumio, actually. Um, and they actually belonged to sort of the same Russian, French, Franco, Belgian, which was also Russian school of violin playing. And maybe that's why they were all equally fond of Mozart. I don't know. I mean, this, these are, this is stream of consciousness logic. Disc two, let's just keep, keep going. The Beethoven Triple Concerto again, now with 
the famous one with Karajan, with Richter and Rostropovich in the Berlin Phil. Now, the interesting thing about these is that I prefer the earlier one with Sargent. I really do. First of all, the tempi are just a hair quicker in the first movement and a minute quicker in the slow movement, which is only about five or six, five minutes long. Six, six would be a huge push. Four minutes and 37 seconds here versus five minutes and 36 seconds. So 59 second difference. And I, I like the Sargent performance better. I just think it has more vitality. Yeah. And a piece that really needs as much vitality as you can give it, by the way. Then we get the Brahms double concerto. Oh, this is the one with Zell and Rostropovich and the Cleveland Orchestra. And oh my goodness, that is one hell of a performance. Absolutely spectacular. Great, 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 great. It always came coupled with this Beethoven triple concerto, but I always thought a better coupling would have been the Brahms violin concerto with Oistrach and Zell, which was unavailable for a thousand years. But we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Just let's just relax because it's, it's in here. Beethoven, violin concerto, Sibelius, violin concerto. These are with the Stockholm Festival Orchestra under Sixten Ehrlich. Now, these haven't been around in ages. Oistrach Sibelius was legendary. Of course, his stereo recording of it was with Ormandy on Sony or Columbia at the time. So it's not in here. His, you got to have a, a recording of him doing the Sibelius Concerto. I mean, Sibelius himself liked him doing the Sibelius Concerto. So you got to hear it. And Sixteen Erling was a great Sibelian. And so this is really good to have. And I'm not getting into things like, you know, mono versus stereo and sonics and whatever. You, you're getting this for Oistrakh and for his artistry primarily. And so you, you get what you get. I'm just telling you right up front, just take it as it comes and enjoy it for what it is. Um, and the Beethoven Concerto was also, it was another Oistrakh specialty, but there is another one coming up, which is actually better than this one, the 16 early. So hang in there. Disc four, Beethoven Violin Concerto. Yes, there it is with the French National Radio whatever orchestra under André Cluton. Oh, Cluton, Cluton, Cluton. Cluton. You know, some of you have tried to tell me how to pronounce his name. I don't know. I don't care. C-L-U-Y-T-E-N-S, Cluitaz, Cluton, Cluton, Cluitin, Clutu, Clutu. I don't care. And it's a great, one of the great, ultimately great Beethoven violin concerto performances in the history of humanity. You must own it. And it's better than the Erling one. It's almost exactly the same in terms of timing. Maybe a teeny tiny itsy teensy teensy bit slower, but it doesn't matter. It's marvelous. It sounds great. And you guys also get on the same disc a fantastic Kreutzer Sonata with Lev Oboren. This is from 1953. Of course, we struck we made all the Beethoven sonatas with Lev Oboren for Phillips, actually now Decca, but who's complaining? Marvelous, marvelous, marvelous stuff. Now, Mozart, Violin, violin Sonata number 32, Kerschel 484. This is like the big, serious Mozart Violin Sonata. It's really the great one. And the, the pianist is Vladimir Yampolsky. Yes, Vladimir Yampolsky. And of course, it's Oistrakh and it's Mozart, and it's just terrific. Along with that, and we're on disc number five already, you get the Beethoven Violin Sonata number three, Opus 12, number three, and the Brahms Violin Sonata number three in D minor, Opus 109. These are also with Vladimir Yampolsky. And, you know, I, like I said, we're not getting into, you know, great versus less great. He was great. And these are marvelous, marvelous performances for the most part. And, you know, you can, everyone has their favorite versions of a lot of these works. So I'm not getting into the games of comparisons. Those we can do in the videos dedicated to the respective works. But for this particular box, as I said, just let's just talk about Oistrach. Next, disc six, Brahms Violin Concerto. Oh, yes, this is the Oistrach specialty. I mean, you just cannot talk about the Brahms Violin Concerto without talking about Oistrach. And both of his recordings are fabulous. And both of them have such marvelous, marvelous accompaniments. So the first one, here's the first one. It's with the Orchestre National de la Radio Diffusion Francaise. You know that one, the same thing as the Beethoven Violin Concerto, only this time the conductor is Otto Klemperer. 
Yes, the Otto Klemperer, he of the granitic orchestral sonority and forward wind timbres. That's oh, wonderful. And then you get the double concerto. Remember the double concerto that he did with Rostropovich and Zell? Well, this one is with Fournier and Alcio Galliera. And it's just wonderful, too. It's just as good as the Zell. Some people like it better. Oistrakh liked it better. I'm not, I'm not arguing. I'm not arguing all the way up. Mozart, violin concerto number three with the Berlin Phil and David Oistrakh. So there's the Mozart, which we don't have to talk about because I already conceded his greatness in Mozart. But the coupling there on disc seven is the Brahms violin concerto again. This is the one with Cleveland and Zell. And what's fascinating about these performances is that the timings are almost identical within seconds of each other. And how could you find conductors as different as Klemperer and Zell in some respects? Really kind of amazing, isn't it? But not here. Either they were completely at one with their soloist who was helping them to set the tempi, or alternately, and just as fascinatingly, they just agreed. They were of one mind when it came to how to play the Brahms Violin Concerto. And the how was just astonishingly great. These are two of the greatest performances in the world. But the Klemperer was always available, and the Zell, at least in the US, was almost never available. You could get it eventually, very eventually, as a Japanese import. And then finally it was released on a, on a CD, like normally, kind of normally, and it went out of print almost instantaneously. They both should be available for all time. They are phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. Okay, uh, disc eight, let's see. Prokofiev, Violin Concerto Number One. This is famous recording with the London Symphony under Lover von Matajic. Beautiful, beautiful, wonderful performance. For many, it's like the one after like Heinrich Schering, you know, I mean, not not Schering, I'm sorry, Joseph Zagetti. I was thinking of the other, not Schering, Zagetti. Um, they both begin with like an S and a Z or something in their name. Um, and then the violin concerto number two, again with Alcio Galliera. I mean, you know, I struck new Prokofiev. What, what do you think you're going to get? <laughs> I mean, honestly. Then we get the Prokofiev violin sonata number two with Vladimir Yampolsky. And then on disc nine, Mozart, violin concertos one and three, plus the Sinfonia Concertante with Igor Oistrakh in the latter, his son Igor, wonderful performance. This is for many, and I happen to be one of those many, sort of the, the, the reference recording for the Mozart Symphony Concertante, which I just adore for violin and viola. It's a Sinfonia Concertante, I call it Symphony Concertante, doesn't matter. The point is, it is Mozart's greatest string concerto, and really one of the greatest concertos for strings ever, and one of the greatest double concertos ever. And this performance with David and Igor Oistrakh, with David conducting the Berlin Philharmonic, is just, it's just magical. Absolutely magical. It's phenomenally great. Okay, concerto, uh, the concerto, compact disc number 10, Mozart Violin Concerto 4, Violin Concerto 5, the Adagio K, you know, whatever it is, 261, the Rondo Concertante, and the Rondo in, in C, K373. These are all with the Berlin Phil, and like I said, it's Oistrakh, it's Mozart, it's as good as Grumio in Mozart. These are the classic Mozart performances of the, you know, 60s, 50s, 60s, 70s, that area, really. Now, of course, everyone and their mother is doing them, but these were the sets. You either had Oistrakh or you had Grumio, and, and you were very happy. And you should still be very happy. There's no reason not to be happy. All right, compact disc 11, Mozart, violin concerto number three, again with the Philharmonia and Oistra, because he made some of these multiple times. And then the concertone, the old concertoni with Igor Oistra and the Berlin Phil and David Oistra. I mean, that's all great. Next, Lalo, the Symphony Espanol. Oh, God, I hate this piece. I mean, you know I hate it. I hate it because. I might as well tell you again, I once got trapped playing the snare drum part in the finale for a Suzuki violinist and her incredibly overbearing stage parents who were hiring the Stanford Symphony for some reason to do this piece with her. And I mean, she could play, but oh God, it was like torture, 
torture doing that finale you know it, it's a nightmare and then of course you have to wait for movements so you get to that exciting bit there oh yeah. it's a wonderful performance wonderful it's with the Philharmonia and Jean Martinon fantastic you're not going to get a better Lalo Symphony Espanol so whether you like it or despise it if you're going to listen to it you might as well pick this one you could do a lot worse and then there's the Brook Violin Concerto again with Von Matichic and the LSO and Shostakovich oh god Violin Concerto number one with Maxim Shostakovich and the New Philharmonia now Oysterach was very very pleased with this but he did it a couple of times I gotta tell you between you and me, I, by the time he did this, which was like, what, 72 or so? Yeah, 1972. He was, he was sort of getting towards the end of his career. He hadn't lost much in terms of technique. He really hadn't. And with Maxim Shostakovich, and, you know, the piece was written for him by Shostakovich, he, he always played the work with a certain sovereign command. He really did. But, God, that first one with, 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 with Metropolis on Columbia wow oh boy it just had a febrile intensity let's say that this one doesn't quite match but it's still I mean it's very 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 good and uh, the second concerto is of course nowhere to be found and the Cacciatorian violin concerto with a Philharmonia under Cacciatorian the Cacciatorian himself so if you like that work another another totally artist sanctioned um, classic reference recording. I mean, you know, nothing not to love. Then you get, I, I, this is actually, I think, one of the prizes of the entire set. The Taneyev Suite de Concert, which is a what, one, two, three, four, five movement thing by Taneyev, which is really one of the great violin and orchestra works of the you know, late 19th, early 20th century. There's another piece like this, the Sook Fantasy, you know, for violin. It, these, these are wonderful works of concerto length and size and virtuosity and musical interest and really top quality in terms of thematic invention. They're not called concerto, so they don't get played, but they really should. And this Tenny of work is wonderful. And this is with this is with Nikolai Malko and the Philharmonia. Really, really a great Russian work. And you know, you, you kind of feel like if Oistrak couldn't popularize it, nobody can but it deserves to be popular. It's, a, it's just terrific. Then we get the Frank Violin Sonata with Vladimir Yampolsky and the Szymanowski Violin Concerta, violin Conchata. The Conchata, yes. It's a co cross between a sonata and a concerto. It's a Conchata. That's the Szymanowski Violin Sonata in D minor with also Yampolsky. And then there's a bunch of, of little, little pieces with him as well. Um, you know, little short, little short hoojis by Sook, Kodai, Vinyavsky, uh, Alexander, Zarchitschitschitschitschitschitschitschitschitschitschitschitschitschitschitschitschitschitschitschitschitschitschitschitschitschitschitschitschitschitschitschitschitschitschitschitschitschitschitschitschitschitschitschitschitschitschitschitsch
Vladimir Sorokin. Yes, Sorokin. Joseph, Joseph Gartovich. Joseph Steedle. Yakov Shapiro. I think, I think he ran a jewelry store in my hometown. And, and of course, David Oistrock at the head of the whole thing. I mean, sui generis performances by wonderful, wonderful, wonderful musicians. And so that, my friends, is David Oistrach, I'll put it this way, David Oistrach, The Great Recordings on Warner, formerly EMI. And I don't need to tell you that if you don't have this, you really owe it to yourself to get your pause on it while you can. Because even though it's still around, and it was, of course, originally on EMI and now on Warner, God knows where it's going to turn up, turn up next. If it ever will, or for how long, maybe on Costco, their label. Who knows? Keep on listening, folks. Thank you for joining me. Take care.